Doug missed a guy here, just getting ready to do turn five and six of our zombie side Toxic City Mall playthrough. But first, I want to do some corrections before we move on. So, at the top of it is uh, last game session when I did uh, the dual pistols for Doug and the matching set when he traded with somebody else. You can't actually get a matching set that way, you have to draw it on a search. So, if you were to draw those pistols, or draw a pistol, he would automatically be able to pick up a second one. But when traded, he only got one. Uh, it didn't have a huge effect on gameplay, luckily. But uh, anyway, uh, he does have his crowbar in hand still, which is, is a good thing. Um, and also, just a just slightly additional correction, with the laser pointer that is attached to his pistol, pistol it adds plus one to the dice roll, not uh, a whole other die. So we have uh, corrected that as well. Um, lastly, one of the things that I did last session was I dropped a frying pan in here for people to where let me go over to it for people to pick up. Now that is uh, something we played with for a long time with zombie side. So, but I want to make it clear that is a house rule, and I'm going to continue to play it that way, even though that's not the way the official rules state, uh, because that's the way uh, we play it. The way we play it at home uh, with our our gaming group. Um, and then lastly, uh, the only thing, uh, the other, only other thing I, I dealt with here is that apparently this, these spaces here, a little confusing to me and visually, is actually an alleyway. You know, it kind of makes sense. There's trash and stuff out there and all this other stuff, but it's hard to tell. And in an alleyway, uh, you cannot search. Uh, it's like the same as search, not being able to search in a street. So um, while that is the case, uh, I did treat these as rooms because they looked kind of like rooms to me. Uh, and uh, we'll correct that going forward, but I'm not going to make any changes that would allow us to um, uh, have, make us have to go backwards. So currently that is where we're at. We ha this is where our, our team is, and we're going to continue on with turn five of Zombie Side. Okay, turn five. So, so far I think that uh, since we need to, to come over to this room here and open the door, uh, and head in that room. I'm going to have Doug do that since he's got his crowbar and Elsa's got the better weapon. So instead of having her open the door, we'll have have good old Doug do it. That's going to require for him. Again, so we are officially starting. I'm going to make Doug the first player. And in that, he is going to then come over here from this room. He will move here. That's one. He will move next door, that's two, and he will open the door with his crowbar for three. Now we have to populate this room here, this uh, little toy store with zombies. Lucky for us, we just drew one simple little walker. Um, that's a good thing, so it's not too bad. Uh, now, Doug can't do anything, he's out of action, so he's just standing there looking at the walker right now. But as you can see, if this was uh, in a uh, higher level, we would have drawn a zombie dog or perhaps six walkers or seven dogs. It could have been terrible. Uh, luckily, we're still in the blue zones, so just one little walker. Now I will move on to uh, Rawl's turn, who will be next. Rawl, uh, he's equipped with an assault rifle. So what we're going to do with him is we're going to move him over one to here, to this uh, open room, and he is going to shoot that zombie. Now, he's got the assault rifle has a stat where it rolls three dice. It requires a four to hit a four or higher, and it does one point of damage. Pretty decent weapon. It can't kill fatties and, and abominations, but still a pretty good weapon. Uh, so that said, we're going to roll the dice. And, uh, whew, man, I tell you, my dice rolls have been something. We did get a six. The other ones were twos. So we did, in fact, kill this walker. So he is gone. And Raul gets one experience. Raul is now at six experience points. So one more experience point, and he will go to the 
yellow sector. Now, once any player has increased up in danger and skill, um, it automatically increases the danger level for everyone. So at that point, every player might as well go ahead and get to the next level. So uh, we're going to move on then to, um, uh, it will be Elsa's turn. She's a brown figure. Now what she's going to do for her first action is she's going to move to this space with these three guys here. And uh, she will move into the toy store here for her second action. Now she could open that door. Uh, I'm still a little leery about that. Um, I think I'd like to get everybody close and closer and ready into that room to make the assault as soon as that door is open. So for her last action, she is going to do a search. And we're going to search uh, our deck here. Uh, she got, wow, hollow point rounds. Pretty nice. Plus one damage with 44 Magnum pistol, sniper rifle, rifle, and evil twins. She does not have those. She has a shotgun, but she'll take those and trade them off with... Uh, um, uh, probably uh, Raul, who has a rifle. Uh, now, I wonder if that includes the assault rifle, which is a newer card. But we'll just say, because it doesn't read that way, that it does not. So we're going to put this in, in uh, Elsa's inventory, and that will end her turn. Not least for turn five is Derek. Now, he's just got the assault rifle. Now, Derek is still in this room over here, as you can see. So we're going to move him next door. Okay, we're going to move him next door to here. And then he will also join Elsa up in this room. Now, that means two of the people with our, our highest firepower are already standing in this room getting ready to assault the zombies as we open that door. Um, he, will too, will, might as well spend his last action drawing a search card. Uh, oh, look at He got one of the dogs. That is pretty outstanding. Cherry, the blue healer. So we're going to go find Cherry's figure. And as you can see, she can move three zones per move. She's got the skill slippery, which means she doesn't have to take two moves to move through zombies. She can search. She has a low profile. I have to read what that means. And she gets an extra die in melee uh, on top of her three dice already. That's pretty good. So she got three dice, needs four, and she does one. So that is a great card for, for Derek to get. We're going to put that uh, in his reserve inventory here. And we're going to get Cherry's figure and put her out. Wow, what a great find for Derek, having uh, Cherry the Blue Healer uh, as a companion for the rest of this mission, uh, at least until uh, such time when Cherry might uh, get off or something. Again, i got to quickly look at the rules for the dogs, make sure I'm playing them right, uh, which will impact our next turn. But anyway, that is going to end our player turns for turn five. Now we'll move on to the zombies. First we'll start with movement, and then we'll start with... Well, actually, first we would start with attacking, but there are no zombies that can currently attack a player. So we'll move right into movement and then zombie spawn. A ton of noise but for searches last, uh, last time. I didn't point out the noise markers, but we all know that uh, the, all the players are pretty much together in a single area. So what we're going to do here is these, this four group here is not going to move. They're right at the door where the noise is coming from, but they cannot get in. However, this one will move to this location with the rest of the zombies there and we'll just circle around. Now this one here will move, well let's just go closest to where they're moving to. We got this fine young late zombie lady right here, she will move to back to this zone as well. You can see the zombies are really piling up there. Um, this guy here, he's gonna move one down to this zone and then we have some real trouble with this zombie dog who's going to move one to there. Back up a little bit so you can see it. Two to there and then with the third move action to here. That is going to be some trouble. We're definitely going to need to kill all of those in one turn if we can so we can get to that zombie dog. Otherwise, he could literally come into the room and attack anybody in there. Now, uh, we can go in and do melee, maybe dog to dog. We might, we might pull that off and see how that works. So coming here, we got uh, these three that are in this zone that are going to move next door to here. I mean, we're really, this is, I think, one of the, the hard parts of this scenario is we're really starting to pile up some bad guys over here. Um, in here we got the fatty and his two walkers, which will move out into the street here next to this pit mobile, which has not been searched yet. And then we got one toxic walker that's moving into here. At least we have these two zombies. This one here is going to move down one zone. And then this toxic walker is going to move one zone down to here. So now all we have to do is do our zombie spawns for turn five, and we'll be right back. We're spawning for this round, we got uh, uh, two, oops, I missed one here. Two toxic zombies spawned in this spot, this location here. Right here we just had a single walker. Here we had a normal fatty coming with two walkers in. 
and in the last spawn point we had a, another single walker. So that wraps up the zombie uh, turn for turn 5. Now we'll move on to the player's turn, turn 6. Turn 6 is about to begin. Now we're going to have a lot of action this round because when someone opens that door there, it's going to be zombie crazy. We're going to have to do a lot of shooting and fighting. Um, I looked up the ability for the dog, low profile. It means that when they're in a zone containing uh, zombies, etc., they can, they can avoid being targeted by player shots from guns, things of that nature. Now that wouldn't take effect if it was a Molotov cocktail. That does kill absolutely everything in the zone. But um, also, it does for the dog to take the actions that they have, uh, the owner must sacrifice um, an action as well. But in that, the, the dog can move and attack and all that good stuff. So um, we will be playing this dog wisely. Uh, at this point in time, though, I think what we're going to do is... <laughs> As crazy as it sounds, we're going to have Doug start again because he's got the crowbar, and we want Elsa to take a, do as much damage as possible with her um, with Ma's shotgun. So first thing that's going to happen is uh, we're going to have Doug here. So again, we're Doug will be first player for this turn. He is the blue figure right here. He will move into this uh, toy store here. He's going to then, for his second action, open this door. Uh, exposing him to all of that. Now they have these zombies here do have line of sight into this room. And for his final action, he's going to, you might as well take a shot uh, with the uh, pistol. You remember, he has plus one to his die roll because of the laser pointer. But uh, let's, uh, let's have him try and pop one of these zombies out. Man, see, so that the laser pointer actually helped. I, I didn't roll a six, I rolled a three, wherever that is, right there. Um, and uh, the gun has a, the pistol has a four, so with the plus one to the pistol, he actually did hit and kill one of the zombies. So we're going to come up here and look at the zombies in this zone. Now they're all, except for the dog, they're all walkers, so we're going to pop them first. Uh, keep in mind that that does give Doug one experience point. Uh, we'll take care of that, and we'll move on to turn the turn of Raw. This does put Doug up into the yellow zone, so he gets a sec he gets an extra action, which takes effect immediately. So what we're going to do with him is he's going to, he's might as well just take another pot shot at these zombies with his pistol. So we're going to get a die out, and we're going to roll it. And, man, wow, um, now I did roll a six right there, which pops another one of these walkers on the street. That's going to uh, take one of these guys out. We'll take them off the board, and now Doug gets one more experience. Of course, that's not going to change any skills or anything for him, but uh, that will end Doug's turn officially. Now we have Raul. He's got a baseball bat and a rifle. Well, obviously, he's going to take his rifle. Uh, rifle only gets one dice, but it only needs a three plus. Um, it does have a range of one to three, but since there's so many zombies right in front of him, he's just going to uh, take all his actions since he's already... Uh, wait, no, he needs to move. I'm sorry. Uh, so his first action actually is going to be... See, he's right there. So his first action is going to be to move into the room, and now he's in there with the rest of the team, and he's going to get two shots at these zombies. So... The first shot was a six again. Wow, we're getting very lucky. Just to show you that over here, bam. Um, and he uh, he takes out another walker, giving him another experience point. Um, and he might as well do that again. Uh, he's going to take a second shot. Now I do need to put noise markers out. I haven't been doing that because I'm one-handed. He rolled a three, uh, uh, one-handed because I'm holding a camera. He rolled a three, so that does also hit, taking out yet another one of these zombies. That's going to give him two experience points, so I'm going to adjust his experience points and place out the noise markers. In addition to his experience points, that gives Raoul another action as well, uh, meaning that we're going to take yet another shot at these zombies. We're clearing out that area pretty well. Um, it's going to, it might take a little time. We're definitely going to need to try and move out into the street, but for now, we're going to come back up here. Okay, and there we are. Rawls right in the door there. He's going to shoot at another walker. Uh, he rolled a six again. Man, I just can't tell you enough that I'm happy with these dice rolls. Uh, and he popped yet another walker, leaving only one walker and the zombie dog left in that zone. And Elsa hasn't even gone yet. Uh, neither has, has Derek with his assault rifle. So I think we're in good shape this turn. Uh, that will end uh, Rawls' turn. Now we're going to move on to Elsa. Okay, here's Elsa. Now she's got these hollow point rounds. She is in the same spot as as uh, Derek, who has, or actually Rawl, who has the assault rifle. So she's going to take 
those hollow point rounds is her first action, trade them to Raul so that he gets the bonus of plus one damage with the sniper rifle, which he has. Uh, then for her second action, she's going to shoot shoot into the zone with the zombies. As you can see right there, she's stand the red the red figure. Uh, now it doesn't matter if people are in the same space as you when you're shooting; it just matters the, sh the space you're shooting into. Now remember that Ma's shotgun uh, gets two dice at ranged uh, and has uh, three plus to hit. So the first target she's going to shoot at, of course, is based on priority, is the walker. She rolled two threes, um, which does hit for that weapon. So she actually did two point two hits of damage, which will take out the walker and the zombie dog. We are clear of baddies. Now. Here's the good news for, for her. Um, her. She, Elsa, I don't know, she, two experience points won't move her into getting another action. So she still has one more action. I think uh, what she'll do to end her turn is, yeah, she might as well search that room. And don't forget, I do have to put out yet another noise marker. Um, and I'm doing this just to make the rules clear, even though it's obvious where all the noise is coming from. Um, and there's that. So we're going to do one more search. Search deck is right here. See what she comes up with. Cookies. All right, she can discard this to gain one extra experience point. Well, you know what? Um, this is the first discarded item that we're going to have, but uh, it doesn't say she has to use an action to do that or anything. So I think what we're going to do is actually discard the cookies, and that will give her a total of three experience points for this turn, which will put her exactly at six, one below the point she needs to uh, get a uh, uh, her next skill, which will give her an additional action as well. So that will end Elsa's turn. We're going to go on to this. This going to be an interesting turn for Derek. I'm going to try something a little different. He could step out in the street, which would take one of his actions, and then only give him, uh, well, you know, with the assault rifle, he could probably take two actions to take all these out. But if he doesn't, uh, he's exposed for next turn, and people will have to come in and do melee. Of course, he can bring his dog in and do that. So what we're going to do with, with uh, Derek here, the yellow figure, is he is going to move out in the street. Now, this is going to change the noise rules, too, because it's either... Uh, the first priority is line of sight, so any zombie that can see Derek is going to head toward Derek. Uh, first off, he's going to roll, now remember, keep in mind that the assault rifle does roll three dice. It needs a four plus, but it does roll three dice, and that's, that's pretty important. So he's got four zombies here, he's got two actions to try and kill them, uh, and if he can do that uh, in a reasonable time frame, he can, or if he can do that with one action, he can turn around and then kill the one that's behind him. So to start with, we're going to roll three dice. And uh, wow, we got all three hits there. So, and, oh wait, no, let's take it back. He needs a four. So we only got one hit on that. That's going to kill one of the walkers that's right there. Bam. And giving uh, giving uh, Derek a point of experience. He was the lowest on the experience points. So he'd have to do a lot better than that to uh, take out all those walkers. That's going to put a noise uh, token in his uh, section too, but I'll do that after we're done. He's taking his second shot with those walkers. Hopefully he'll do better. He did not. Uh, he still only got one hit on three dice, a six and two twos. So there he is again. We're going to pop another walker. Again, that gives Derek two experience points, and we'll end his turn. That also ends the turns of the players. Now we'll head into the zombie turn six, and we'll do that now. And I just need to make the adjustment for the noise markers and adjust uh, Derek's experience. I think it could be worse for Derek. I mean, the, the zombies are going to move into space, but uh, they're not going to be able to attack because if you remember in the order turned for zombies, they attack first. So Derek is first going to have a zombie move into this space with him. That that's, uh, sucks, but remember, we're going to spawn more zombies over here, so this could get a little rough. Uh, then these two zombies here are both going to move into his space as well, so he's uh, a bit surrounded. Now what that means is the guys, ex with the exception of Raul, who has a sniper rifle because he's got the scope, Anybody who fires into that space with a, a ranged weapon will hit uh, Derek first. So we can't allow that to happen. However, uh, we'll probably have Rawl actually go first next turn so that he can sniper those three zombies and the team can move out and, and move freely and or shoot into the other zones. Uh, but that will be next turn. So uh, moving up to here, we do have the fatty and his two friends that are going to be moving down into here, and I needed to discard that. Uh, card there, so they move down to there. Uh, we have, we'll move down here and keep moving in order. This fatty is going to move into here with his two walkers. Now, look at what's happening here. We got two fatties coming up, which means we're going to need a damage dealer, probably um, 
Elsa with the fire axe. Uh, probably our best bet at this point. Nobody else has a weapon that can do two points of damage. Uh, uh, well, the fire axe or the or my shotgun. So she's going to have to be the one to get these fatties because they take two points, and you have to do two points in a single hit, not two dice rolls. Um, each dice roll counts as a separate hit. So if you're only doing one point of damage, you will not kill the fatties no matter how many times you ping them with single dice rolls. Um, then we got this... Uh, Walker here, who's going to move out into the street next to the pit mobile. We've got to get over there and search it because there's going to be better weapons over there. This walker here is going to move into the same zone as this toxic walker. And remember, we got to get the toxic walkers before they get into our zone, or we're going to have some serious trouble there, too. And we got three toxic walkers one in this zone that will move into the street here, one that will move here. Uh, those two will move there. And then I have one left that's going to move here. Uh, that's it for the zombie moves. Now I'm going to do zombie moves. We did our, our spawns for zombie turn six. Now, uh, this this spot was great. We only generated one meager walker. Now remember, we're in the yellow zone now that uh, two players have reached their yellow experience and threat level. Uh, so one walker, not too bad. Now, uh, but <laughs> things were not so good for us in other areas. So up at this zone here, we, we spawned two walkers. Not terrible. Up here, we spawned another fatty. So keep in mind that we're looking at the yellow zone. And then right here is probably the worst, worst so far. Three zombie dogs have come out in that zone right there. Now, that's going to end all of turn six. So this will be uh, where we're going to end it for today. Thanks for watching, and uh, I look forward to continuing on. Things are starting to get a little tense here for us. Uh, we have a couple zombies on Rawl here. Uh, they're all moving into his space. I'll, of course, I'll clean up the uh, noise markers since the turn is over uh, before we continue our next session. Um, everybody's still in good shape. Uh, Elsa's still ready to go with Ma's shotgun and the fire axe. She, she's going to get to step out and probably have to lay into this fatty here as quickly as possible. Uh, Doug still just got a pistol. I think he's definitely going to need to search the room, try and see if he can get a better weapon before he steps out to take some actions. We got Derek who has an assault rifle and the Cherry the Blue Healer, a, a dog companion, which can help him. Um, now, dog companions can only take one hit, but they have a lot of other great abilities. They can even search and pick up one item. <clears throat> and then Rawl, who's got his baseball bat, his hollow point rounds, and his rifle, so he's in good shape to do some serious damage, uh, especially with the ranged effect. Um, now, the, the hollow point rounds actually do plus one damage. That means his assault rifle is actually going to do two points. He can now take out uh, the, the fatties as well, uh, which is pretty awesome because we're going to need that as, as we now have, as you can see, we now have three appearing on the board as I pan back and show you kind of the situation around the players starting to get a pile up. Now, we got to make our way to that objective token there. I think that's going to be our priority because if we continue down the street, they're just going to spawn by, back behind us and we won't be able to get back to it. So um, I don't know if we're going to have our team split up a little bit to do that, maybe two go to that door and two stay in the street and kind of keep the zombies at bay. We'll, we'll see how this works out in the next turn, depending on dice rolls, etc. But anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. We'll catch you on the next uh, next one.